I want to talk a little bit about using a row counter and reading your knitting, which can be helpful if you need to look back, you know, you've lost track of where you are and you want to be able to look back at your knitting and see exactly what you've done, which is called reading your knitting. First up, let's talk about a row counter. Now you'll use these to keep track of where you are and then you might not have to be able to read your knitting if you're keeping good track of the rows. Um, before you ask, because I know I'll get this question, this little green counter is called a kacha counter and rows are registered by just pushing the button on the top. I always wear this around my neck when I'm knitting and the reason this one is my favorite is because it has a lock on it and when you lock it, it won't count rows so it won't accidentally want to you know, click rows while it's in your knitting bag and then really throw you off. This is made by Clover and it's available at a lot of different online stores. You can do a search for it. Clover Kacha Counter. First up, let's talk about using the row counter because you need to get it set in your head how you're going to use it. This is how I think about it. I think I use it like I'm running laps. Um, before I run my first lap, I'm on zero. After I finish a lap, I would count one. After I finish another lap, I would count two. That's the way I think about it. So whatever is on the counter is the last row that I finished. Not the row that I'm on, the row that I finished. You see what I'm saying? Just like if I was running laps. Okay, now let's take a look at the work here. This is a stockinette swatch. And if you wanna be able to read your knitting, let's say for instance, your pattern says to knit 10 rows from here. Okay, to count the number of rows that I have, I'm going to be counting these V's all the way up. So not counting that one, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then I'm also going to count the loops on the needle because that is a finished row as well. So counting the V's all the way up, this is a bulky swatch, really easy to see. If I'm working with a fine lace yarn, I'm much more careful about keeping track with a counter because it is harder to see and harder to count. But I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, count the loop on the needle, that is eight rows. So if I'm going up to 10, I know I have a down and a back yet to work for two more rows. This gets more complicated, of course, if you're working on something that has cables in it or lace or something like that. But this, I don't always use a row counter for stockinette because it's that easy to read. Now talking about easy to read, garter stitch is even easier. It is more difficult to tell what the right side would be because you do want to count rows on the right side of the work. I always look at the cast on and count this twill edge of the cast on as the right side. The other side is the pearl bumpy side and I like that to be the wrong side. It's not a disaster if you mix it up, but I like this to be the right side. And then in Garter stitch, every ridge counts as two rows. If you pull it apart, you know, this is like a pearl bump row, but if you pull that apart, you'll see there are knit stitches between each one of these. So each ridge is two rows. So it's super easy to keep track of where you are in garter stitch. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. That's really easy. Anyway, I hope that helps you with using a row counter and reading your knitting after you've knit it. Thank <laughs> you.